night 25 uh we are just one oh, one week away or yesterday was one week away uh well one week if you count today but this is a uh, scary stories to tell in the dark this movie i did not know was a halloween movie i had no clue until uh, i kind of did some more research it's not really a Halloween movie. It just has a Halloween setting. And I was like, well, fuck it. I mean, if people think Nightmare Before Christmas is a fucking half Halloween movie, then I guess I could throw this in there, too. I mean, even though, it, to me, Nightmare Before Christmas is a Christmas fucking movie. So, fuck you. Um, but, yeah. Uh, scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Guillermo del Toro presents... Scary stories to tell in the dark. He's a producer on this movie, but everybody thought he like made the movie. No, it's directed by fucking. Uh, I'm not even gonna say that dude's name, Andre, and some fucked up last name. I don't know how you say it. It's like Avridal. But yeah, screenplay by Dan and Kevin Hagerman or Hag Hagerman. I mean, but uh, this movie stars Austin Zaher, which is uh, Kevin Smith's daughter's boyfriend. He played the fucking uh, blockchain Coltrane on Clerks 3. He's in this movie. Um, Zoe Coletti, Michael Garza, Austin Abrams, he's a little dirtball kid on Paper Towns. Um, but this movie is fucking interesting as fuck. Like, for, for what it was, I was like, dude, like, because there's three books, and, like, this one kind of intertwines all of it, and it's actually really good. Um, Stella, Augie, and Chuck. That's their names. Um, Chuck is the, the fucking the Kevin Smith daughter-boyfriend guy. Augie is, like, the, some nerdy-ass white dude, and then Stella is, like, the, the chick that is kind of just there. Um, Tommy Milner is the, the fucking, the dirtball kid from Paper Towns, uh, Austin Abrams. They fucking prank him, and then he ends up trying to, like, trying to attack him. At the same time, there's a new kid named Ramon who shows up, and they end up jumping in his car at the drive-in. <coughs> and, um, they're like, well, we need to fucking, and whatever the hell, we just kind of keep us safe until the fucking, uh, Milner and his little goons disappear. Um, they fucking spot him, and then, like, it, because of the time frame, it, it's, it takes place in, like, 1968, so, right away, fucking Tommy Milner starts being racist as shit to Ramon, and you're like, Jesus Christ, because he's the Mexican new kid in, in town and everything, so then he's like, I'll help you guys, fuck that kid, you know, later on, um, Uh, where is it at? Tommy locks up the group. Oh, they lock him up in this fucking house in this in this building, and that's when they find a book. And then the book was uh, written by a a, a, a witch, like or, or a daughter from witchcraft. Her name is Sarah Bellows. Uh, all of a sudden, people started dying because she wrote this fucking book. She committed suicide, and then they. That's when they start seeing that this book starts writing shit about them. Like, so, like, they're like, oh, The Red Room with, uh, fucking Chuck. Starring Chuck, basically. And that's when he sees the, the big old fat marshmallow lady who, uh, he's kind of like, he, every hallway he turns, there she is. So he can't get away from her, and, like, he's trying, like, he starts running, and, like, she's there, and, like, she's getting closer, but, like, it's, this part's, like, actually pretty badass, like, every time, every, like, she'll be, like, like, maybe 40 feet away from him, he'll run and turn down a hallway, and there she is, still 40 feet away from him, like, she's gradually getting closer no matter which fucking way he goes, I thought that was awesome, then she finally fucking, like, pushes his ass into her and then I guess he dies. I don't, they really don't explain. Um, that's uh, Tommy 
Well, but that's like later on. She discovers a story called Harold. It's about the scarecrow because earlier Tommy Milner and his boys keep throwing fucking bottles and shit at the scarecrow. But then Harold comes alive and um, yeah, stabs fucking Tommy with his pitchfork. And then like he starts like spouting out hay from his mouth and like it's coming out of every fucking hole he has in his fucking head. And he becomes a fucking scarecrow. Like they find the they find the scarecrow with with Tommy's Letterman's jacket on. Um, then there's the big toe story with with Augie where he uh fucking he, he's cooking and he finds his fucking toe and it's in a stew. He eats the fucking toe and he disappears after a corpse drags him under his bed. But then when they move his bed, they see like from where he was dragged under. It's like right into the fucking wall. So they're like, well, where the hell is he dragged to? You know, and then, um, they go to destroy the book and that's when the fucking red, the red spot starts getting written. And that's where, uh, Ruth, who's Chuck's sister, she has a spider bite on her face, but she doesn't, she doesn't really think anything of it. And then finally, like a bunch of spiders start coming out of her fucking face, which I was like, ah, it's fucked up. Um, she's, they save her, but she's all fucking traumatized and scared about it. Um, then that's when, uh, that's when Chuck's attacked by the pale lady, because that's what the, that's the story with him. Uh. A phantom from his nightmares who absorbs him, which is fucked up. Um, then, and then the the new story called the Jangly Man, which this is fucking. This one kind of was like a little unsettling. Like the dude's in pieces, and he falls down the fucking chimney, and he fucking all of his pieces fall out, and then they start morphing together, and he's all fucking crawling, all fucking crazy. He starts chasing him down the fucking street and shit, which I was like, damn, this movie, this movie's getting kind of fucked up. Um, Stella writes down, then, then like the, after they get, they they kind of subdue him enough where they can get away. Um, she promises the the ghost of Stella, because Stella's writing, or not Stella, Sarah, because she's the one who's writing the stories. She promises that she'll fucking clear her name and shit if, if fucking Sarah leaves them alone. Um, so Stella writes down a story in blood. She fucking punctures her finger and shit. And then she, uh, she and all her monsters vanish. Because uh, Sarah shows up and shit. Uh, Stella writes the truth about Sarah's life in the papers, keeping her promise. Ramon accepts his uh, enlistment because he's trying to fucking go to the army and shit. Shares an emotional goodbye with Stella before he leaves for the war. Ruth is, is recovered. Stella and Ruth are talking at the very end, and that's when she's like, I'm going to find a way to bring Augie and Chuck back. Which, you're like, oh, they're going to make a fucking sequel. But, um... They announced it in 2020, two years ago, but they, that's it. They haven't really, uh, they haven't really explained anything. Like, they haven't really, like, confirmed or denied if it's gonna get made still. So, I, I guess we'll wait and see. But, for what it was, like, like I said, it's based off a book. And a lot of movies based off books, everybody always says books are better. Like, and I've never read the books of these, so I was like, I'll watch the movie. And I thought the movie was fucking awesome. Like, I thought this was a really good movie. But anything, fucking anything, with Peter Jackson or Guillermo del Toro's names attached, fucking amazing. Like, you've seen the Hellboy movies? You know, fucking uh, Pan's Labyrinth? The, what was the other one? The Orphanage? Even though it's all in Spanish? <clears throat> Guillermo del Toro, he makes some damn good movies. Um, he did Blade Two, the best one out of the fucking trilogy. So yeah, 
I would recommend the shit out of this movie. Like, like I said, it's not really a Halloween movie. It just starts off in Halloween. Um, they're all wearing costumes and shit. She's a witch. Augie's can't remember what the fuck he is. And the other kid, he's like, Mom, I wanted to be Spider Man, not Spider Man, because he has like a fucking suit that has like other arms sticking out of it. So then she's like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And then, uh, yeah. But I mean, like, uh, it, it, it's just the first part takes place on Halloween. And then Tommy Milner becomes a scarecrow, and then, like, the next day, it's nothing to do with Halloween anymore. Uh, so, that's pretty much it uh, with, with the Halloween setting. Um, it's good for what it is, but yeah, you don't have to wait till Halloween to watch this movie. I recommend it. I do say check it out if you haven't seen it already. But, yeah, it's worth watching. You can watch this movie any time of the fucking year. But it's well worth watching. So, but I do recommend it. I, I already said that. But other than that, like, uh, there's really nothing else. It's, it's more or less like a, it's like horror for kids kind of thing, you know. But, you know, but for what it is, it's actually pretty good. It had a pretty decent fucking uh, reception. Uh, 77 on the Rotten Tomatoes. Pretty good movie. The movie was faith faithfully recreates the peak moments of half of a dozen of Schwartz. Doesn't totally embrace the fucking vision of the book, but it it still says the story well enough that you kind of get what's happening. But yeah, uh, I recommend checking it out. It's worth the watch. It's not worth the fucking cult classic spreading it around, but it's for what it is, it's a pretty good movie. You watch it once, and then you're like, all right, and put it put it away for maybe a year or two, and then check it out again. Um, but other than that, uh, I got nothing else. That was and um, that concludes night twenty five on the thirty one nights of Halloween. <laughs>